So we've got Bottle Rocket apart. Uh, you saw the video we ran it around last week, two weeks ago, whatever it was, and uh, we had a stuck bypass with it. So we've got the whole thing apart right now, and we're, we're going through and trying to figure out what happened. And uh, it was pretty obvious once we got the pan off, I found a bunch of bron uh, bronze flakes and powder in here, which is from the bronze distributor drive gear that you use with a billet steel uh, camshaft. So there's usually a little bit of debris there um, as these parts find a home with each other, they become happy with each other. But this looked like a little bit more, so we're gonna we have to look into that really carefully and see what happened. But in the meantime, since we've got it apart, there were a few things that I wanted to correct on it and a few things I wanted to talk to you guys about. So the first is that this is the stock pan. Um, so one of the issues you have with a stock pan on an engine that has uh, production oil clearances, production, you know, connecting rods, and doesn't see anything more than, let's say, 6,000, 6,500 RPM, you really don't need more volume than the stock pan will hold. Five quarts will more than get you down the quarter mile in the, in the, 10, in the 12 to 10 second zone. The problem you run into, a couple of problems, is uh, baffling. So what happens is when the car, is, for, for, for a normally accelerated car, production car, 14, 15 second car, you really don't need any baffling. As the car accelerates forward, there isn't enough momentum on the, on the oil, there isn't enough uh, 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 g-force acting on the oil to really worry about it all stacking up at the back of the pan. But once you start to get into the quicker cars, it becomes an issue. So what we wanted to do was create a baffle here in the pan to keep the oil, when you hit the gas, to keep the oil from flowing back. So initially what I was going to do is just build a shelf along here with a little baffle like this. So as the oil comes back, it hits that and it, and it delays the amount of oil hitting the back of the pan riding up into the, into the back of the crankshaft. You don't want to stop the oil completely because the oil still has to come back, especially on deceleration. The oil still has to come back you know, and refill the sump. So you want to leave that not sealed. The idea is to delay it long enough for the oil that's coming down, is coming down off the front of the crankshaft and drain it down to the sides to replenish the, uh, the sump. So, and then I says, you know what, we need a windage tray in this thing too. Because windage is one of those things, that it's, it's a serious horsepower robber, right? Um, on an engine like ours, you know, 300 to 350 cubic inches, 350 to 400 horsepower. You could see 15 to 20 horsepower loss through windage. And windage is, as that oil is coming off the crank, the assembly is spinning, the oil is coming off, and it's getting caught up in a cloud. And the, and the reciprocating assembly, the, the connecting rods, the crankshaft, the counterweights, all have to fight through that cloud, and it robs horsepower. So we figure what we'll do is let's kill two birds with one stone. Instead of building a separate baffle and adding a windage tray, let's just make a baffle slash windage tray. So that's what I did with this. So, um, okay, so save your comments. I know that my fabrication skills can best be described as childish and, and angry, right? But I have other redeeming qualities. And even though it looks really crude, it'll do the job. What I did here was I mimicked the factory small block oil pan which bolts to the main caps out of what I, I started with a, uh, with a with a big block one tray just happened to have laying around and I have it into shape and instead of it being attached to the main caps it'll get welded into the pin like so I still have to I still have to fit this thing exactly but you, you can get an idea of what's going on here so what we've got is an open we have to leave the center of this open because on a small block the, just like a Chevy, the oil pickup has to come this way and then down into the sump. So we left this area open. As a windage tray, even though this is open, it'll still work because as the crank is spinning, it'll still, the oil ropes, the oil film that's coming off the crank will still get caught by this ledge and returned to the sump. And for baffling, what we did here was, and again, it's, we're not finished, is we created a shelf right here that will be mostly closed up. It will be about 75% closed up at the back so that 
the oil has a place to go and then stop and slow down. And again, because on deceleration, the oil has to return back to the sump, we're not going to seal this. That's why we're, we're only going to weld it about 75% of the way there. So that's what we've got for oil control and, and, and windage. Now pressure. One of the biggest horsepower thieves in a high performance car is too much oil pressure. A lot of you guys want to see like 30 pounds, you know, you, right away you go for the big pumps. High volume pumps, high pressure pumps. It's not necessary. Here's what you need to know. On an engine that sees approximately no more than 6,000 RPM, 6,500 like that, uh, which is really the outer limits for a hot street engine, and using production tolerances. So remember now, uh, the, the higher performance the engine, like a racing engine, the higher output of the engine is going to have is going to be built with larger clearances, um, and that includes that's the bearing clearance between the journal of the crank and the bearing, and also the side clearance on the connecting rods. So the higher up the horsepower scale you go, the larger those clearances become, and the more oil volume you need to keep it happy. Oil pressure is one of the most misunderstood things there is. The reason you need oil pressure is because as the crank is spinning, the crank has an oil hole that's feeding the connecting rod. The connecting rod gains weight. The faster you spin it, the centrifugal force adds weight to the crankshaft or, or, or adds weight to that journal. And the reason you need oil pressure is to keep the, the increasing weight of the rod from inhibiting the flow of oil through the hole. The formula, and this is from uh, both Bill Jenkins and Smokey Eunuch, the formula for, for a production clearance engine, meaning steel rods, normal side clearance on the rods, normal bearing clearance, is approximately seven pounds per thousand RPM. So, you know, do the math. If you, you, if you, if you go into 5,000 RPM, you need approximately 35 pounds of pressure to keep it happy. At idle, you only need about 10 pounds of oil pressure. See a lot of guys right away they're like, I gotta have 40 pounds of pressure at idle. No. You know, so you take something like when I used to run with the fuel cars, you needed a minimum of 100 pounds at idle to keep the thing happy because you had giant clearances in the aluminum rods, you had giant oil clearances, all to create a cushion for that, for, for, for the detonation prone nitro. But with a street engine, which, which the vast majority of you guys are, are doing, production, parts, production clearances, the, what you're looking for is seven pounds for every thousand RPM. Any more than that, and you're just literally throwing horsepower away. You're not doing anything to prolong the longevity of your engine. So I look into that. I can't tell you what kind of oil to use, you know, synthetic or, 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 or you know, uh, petroleum based or, you know, or the weight of the oil. You're going to have to do all of that homework research on your own for your specific application. But if you're dealing with a typical engine like we are here, small block Chevy, small block Ford, small block Mopar, even a big block of those, and you're dealing with in the engines in that four to 500 horsepower range that see maybe 6,000 RPM, seven pounds for every thousand RPM is the number that you're gonna shoot for. So I think that's it for this time around. I, 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 do we leave anything out? No. Oh, come here, look how snazzy, come here. Come here. Look, I got some dog dish caps on Bottle Rocket. Look at that, right? Snazzy. Thanks, Michael Brig. All right, so that's it, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.